The Middle East, a term rich in political and cultural significance, encompasses several regions in Asia, with a particular focus on West Asia and parts of Africa. Unlike strict geographical boundaries, this term is deeply rooted in culture, allowing for some fluidity. In the eyes of the media and various international organizations, such as the United Nations, the Middle East is typically understood to include Southwest Asia. In Western scholarly literature and discourse, it is often perceived as a cohesive grouping of states in North Africa. When we seek to identify Middle Eastern countries, we examine linguistic similarities, shared ancestry, racial affinities, historical territorial connections, religious heritage, and political influence. In the present day, Israel occupies a unique position within the Middle East. It's worth noting that this country shares borders with nations that openly or indirectly support its adversaries, particularly Palestine, which adds layers of complexity and vulnerability. Significantly, some of these neighboring countries played pivotal roles in the Arab-Israeli conflict during Israel's inception. These five nations bordering Israel possess formidable military capabilities that should not be underestimated. Besides Palestine, which is currently engaged in a territorial dispute with Israel, Israel shares borders with Lebanon to the north, Jordan to the east, Syria to the northeast, and Egypt to the southwest. Here is a summary of the military capabilities of these countries. Lebanon has a history of backing Palestinian independence. So I bet you're wondering, just how powerful is Lebanon's military to even think about challenging Israel? And oh, we can't forget about Hezbollah's role in Lebanon. Okay, so let's talk about the Lebanese armed forces for a second or as many folks call it, LAF. These folks have got three units, the Army, Air Force, and, you guessed it, the Navy. Where do they stand globally? Well, according to the global firepower data, they're ranked 111 out of 145 countries. Their total headcount, 105,000. This breaks down into 80,000 active troops and another 25,000 in paramilitary. No reserves, though and their budget just a little over US 1 billion. Yeah, not as much as some. But here's the kicker. Rankings don't tell the whole story. These guys have seen action. I mean, look at their resume. The Lebanese Civil War, 1975 to 1990. The Taif Agreement in 91. The Dini Battle between 1999 and 2000. The 2006 war, though LAF didn't directly face off with the Israeli army, but still, the conflict in northern Lebanon in 2007, those 2008 clashes, and oh boy, the ripples of the Syrian civil war from 2011 to 2017. Alright, pop quiz. Which branch of the Lebanese armed forces is the biggest? If you guessed the army, you're spot on. They've split their forces between five regional commands and 11 brigades. And if you do the math, that's a whopping 60,000 personnel. Now, when we talk about their weapons, a fun fact for you. A lot of their arsenal is actually gifts or comes with a friendly discount. Despite these donations, historically, the Lebanese army has always had some pretty cool toys in their arsenal. We're talking gear from Western countries, the Soviet Union, and yes, even the good old USA. Remember the M48 tank? Produced by the US, Lebanon got their hands on it in 1984. And guess what? Some of these bad boys were still in action during the Northern Lebanon conflict in 2007. And then there's the legendary T-55, which has the title of most produced tank in history. The Lebanese got them from Iraq in 1988, courtesy of shipments from Libya post-Civil War. Syria also chipped in and sent some over in 93. However, time flies and tanks evolve. 
Enter the M60, a slick upgrade from the M48 Patton. This beast was America's mainstay during the Cold War. But here's a twist. When Lebanon got their first M60s in 2009, they were like, uh, no thanks, to the first 10 units they received from Jordan. But wrapping things up, let's not write Lebanon off just because they're not flaunting the latest hardware. Their arsenal boasts some mean anti-tank missiles. Ever heard of the BMG-71 Tau or M712 Copperhead produced in the US? These missiles pack a punch and have double the effective range of their competitors. And then there are the French Mady, Milan, and Hot 2 missiles. Top of their class, these missiles zip around with faster speeds and even more impressive rangey. Alright, strap in, because we're about to dive into a topic that's super relevant when we're chatting about missiles in Lebanon, Hezbollah. Now, based on what Israel says, Hezbollah's got a mind-blowing stash of 100,000 rockets and missiles. And, oh boy, are they diverse. Ever heard of the Katyusha missile? It's like the OG of Hezbollah's missile family. With a reach of 40 kilometers and a 20 kilos warhead, this used to be their go-to for giving Israel a scare. But wait, there's more. The Fajr missile, ranging between 43 to 75 kilometers. The Zelzal, 125 to 160 kilometers. And the Fateh 110, which can zoom up to an impressive 300 kilometers. Now you might be scratching your head and wondering, who is Hezbollah? Great question. Founded in Lebanon in 1978, they're not just any group, they're a Shia political and military party. And their big mission, get Israel out of Lebanon. But let's get real. How does Hezbollah even think about going toe to toe with Israel? It's hard to slap a label on their strength. But here's a hint. They're known as the strongest non-state actor on the planet. They claim to have a whopping 100,000 trained fighters which is not only more than the Lebanese army, but as many as the entire Lebanese armed forces combined. And I can hear you thinking, who's footing the bill for all of this? Look east, my friend, to Iran. They're the major financiers here, with the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps of Iran also handling the training. US folks have done some math, and they think Hezbollah's military budget is around a cool $700 million. The real ace up Hezbollah's sleeve? It's their rockets. They've got some serious quality and quantity going on, mainly to keep an edge over their main rival, Israel. When it comes to sheer rocket numbers, Hezbollah's giving even some countries a run for their... All right, next stop on our whirlwind tour of Lebanese military power, the Air Force. Setting the stage way back in 1949, these guys have seen their fair share of action over the decades. And get this, right after they got started, Christmas came early. Donated aircraft began flooding in from countries like the UK, France, and Italy. You might think they have these state-of-the-art fighter jets zooming around. Instead, their go-to for combat is the Cessna 208 Caravan. Yep that American-made short-haul fella that's mainly known for cargo flights. They also have the Brazilian-born Embraer EMB-314, which is kind of like a lightweight champ of attack aircraft, designed for easygoing airspaces. With no fighter jets to flex, the Lebanese Air Force's MVPs are their helicopters. They've got a mix, the US-produced Bell UH-1 and Sikorsky S-61, uh, the French's SA-330 Puma and Aerospatiale Gazelle, and the Italian-crafted Augusta Westland AW-139. Quite the international fleet, don't you think? Let's talk Navy, the unsung heroes of the waterways. Boasting a dedicated crew of 1,600, the Lebanese Navy. Well, they're a bit short on the equipment side. While they do have 86 assets to their name, a lot of these are basically the small fries of sea vessels. I mean, no submarines, no aircraft carriers, NATO on the frigates and destroyers. Just 22 patrol boats. But they've still got some interesting rides. 
like the American Advanced Multi-Mission Platform AMP-145 and Marine Protector Class Patrol Boat. They also sail the German waters with the security boat Todendorf Class and Fasmer FPB-20. Not to forget the French Aval Gualum Class and the British Attacker Class. Word on the waves is they're trying to give their fleet a modern day makeover. Can't wait to see what they come up with next. Let's delve deeper into the military prowess of Egypt. Firstly, let's explore the composition of Egypt's military personnel. According to globalfirepower.com, Egypt boasts a total military personnel count of 1,220,000. This total comprises 440,000 active duty members, 480,000 reservists, and 300,000 paramilitary personnel. However, in terms of sheer numbers, this military presence is relatively modest. When considering the entire population of Egypt, the military makes up just 1.13% of its 107,770,524 citizens. Therefore, Egypt has a considerable pool to draw upon to augment its military ranks, especially given that the country mandates military service ranging from 12 to 30 months. This ensures a steady flow of trained individuals into the reserves. Moving from personnel, let's turn our attention to Egypt's military budget. The data reveals that Egypt allocates 4.35 billion US dollars for its military. Just like its military personnel ratio, this budget represents only 1% of Egypt's gross domestic product, which stands at a substantial 404.1 billion US dollars. This modest allocation makes sense when considering Egypt's current economic challenges. The nation often grapples with economic hardships and is frequently labeled as an impoverished country. Additionally, Egypt is known for its increasing debts. As of the end of 2022, the country incurred further debt, borrowing more than 2.9 billion US dollars from the International Monetary Fund. Interestingly, despite borrowing from the IMF in 2022, Egypt was found to have agreed to supply weapons to Ukraine. This decision became a subject of international debate as many viewed Egypt's move as unwise. Not only were they supplying weapons amid their own economic turmoil, but by sending arms to Ukraine, Egypt was ostensibly betraying Russia. As many of us know, Russia holds Egypt in high regard. One testament to Russia's fondness for Egypt is evident in their arms trade. For instance, within the army, Egypt purchased the S-400 missile system from Russia. Introduced in April 2007, this system is a ground-to-air rocket launcher designed to destroy enemy ballistic missiles. In terms of specifications, the S-400 is capable of carrying a range of ammunition. One of its most potent missiles is the 48N6DM, which can reach distances up to 150 miles and altitudes of 88,500 feet. When launched, this missile can speed up to about 6,560 feet per second, tasked with destroying targets traveling at speeds of 15,748 feet per second. Given these specifications, the S-400 is a vital asset for Egypt, especially since they're situated in the Middle East, a region rife with armed conflicts. Yet, Egypt's arms trading paints a somewhat contrasting picture. While they do possess Russian-made armament, they also purchase weapons from the United States. A case in point is their acquisition of the M1 Abrams, a leading tank in the US arsenal. Often hailed as a dominant force in contemporary armored warfare, the M1 Abrams stands out in its class. In terms of armament, the M1 Abrams utilizes a 120mm L44M 256 smoothbore gun 
capable of firing up to 42 rounds of various advanced ammunition types. Besides its impressive firepower, the M1 Abrams boasts a robust protection system, which the US claims can withstand high-impact blasts, chemical weapons attacks, and even biological weapons. By all specifications, this tank is truly formidable. These two ground weapon systems complement Egypt's considerable land arsenal, which includes 4,664 tanks, 77,596 armored vehicles, 3,678 artillery launchers, and 1,575 rocket launchers. The peculiarities in Egypt's arms procurement aren't limited to just the ground forces. Their air force exhibits a similar trend. Having collaborated with both Russia and the United States for ground weaponry, Egypt's air arsenal sees cooperation with China. In recent discussions, Egypt has shown interest in procuring 12 units of China's J-10 Firebird fighter jets. In terms of specifications, the J-10 is a dependable fighter jet renowned for its flying agility and maneuverability, largely credited to the thrust vectoring technology of its twin turbojet engines. While executing missions, the J-10 can reach speeds of Mach 1.8 or 1,380 miles per hour. Its operational range extends to about 1,815 miles with a combat radius of 1,615 miles. Beyond its speed and agility, the J-10 boasts formidable weaponry. This ranges from air-to-air -air rockets to air-to-surface missiles and integrated bombing systems. The YJ-91 missile stands out as its primary air-to-surface weapon due to its 75-mile radius and piercing speed of 2,685 miles per hour. With a 198-pound warhead, this missile can decimate strategic enemy structures. China's state-of-the-art LT-2 laser-guided bomb claimed to have over 90% precision effectiveness complements the J-10's arsenal. The J-10 Firebirds are set to augment Egypt's air weaponry, which already encompasses 333 fighter jets, 411 specialized mission aircraft, and 417 helicopters. From land and air, let's transition to the naval forces. Egypt's naval lineup showcases their seriousness with eight submarines, 48 patrol vessels, 23 minesweepers, seven corvettes, 13 frigates, and two helicopter carriers or light aircraft carriers. The helicopter carrier Egypt employs is the Mistral class, sourced from France. This ship has a substantial carrying capacity capable of transporting 40 tanks, 450 troops, and up to 35 helicopters. With possession of such a helicarrier, Egypt firmly established itself as a nation with a formidable naval force, even within the volatile Middle East. And it's not just Israel. Syria's had the nerve to clash with the US too. Threats? They brush them off. So just how mighty is Syria's military might? Now, on paper, Syria might seem like a lightweight, ranking 64th out of 145 countries in military strength. Their defense budget? A mere $2 billion, which is peanuts compared to the US's whopping $761.6 billion. That's like, what, 0.2% of the US budget? And their active personnel? Just 100,000, with none in reserves. They do have 50,000 paramilitary forces. So, what's the deal? Why is Syria still a thorn in the US's side? Under the watchful eye of Bashar al-Assad, Syria's got some powerful pals, Russia, Iran, and the Hezbollah forces. But here's the twist. Assad's regime doesn't even control all of Syria. A chunk of northwest Syria is in the hands of opposition groups shielded by Turkey. Still, Assad's forces pack a punch, 
especially in the eyes of the U.S. military. All right, let's dive into the land power first. Syria boasts a solid 80,000 active personnel, making it the largest chunk of their military. Officially formed in 1945, the Syrian army has been the star player since 1946, taking center stage in the nation's governance. They've pulled off six military coups and have had their fair share of face-offs with Israel. Internally, they've been the go-to guys to quash Islamic separatist uprisings and the brutal, drawn-out civil war in Syria. Now let's talk hardware. Syria's got a whopping 2,616 tanks, with 1,700 ready to roll. Tactical armored vehicles, 41,148 in total, with 26,756 battle ready. They also sport 319 self-propelled artillery units, 3,225 towed artillery units, and a cool 669 rocket launchers. And guess where most of their gear comes from? Yep, Mother Russia. Their main battle tanks, for instance, are all Russian-made. They've got the mid-tier T-54 and T-55 tanks, which have been on the battlefield since 1945. Fun fact, these are among the most produced tanks in Russian history. Syria also rocks the T-62, which is like the upgraded version of the T-55. This bad boy was the first to be produced with a smoothbore tank gun. Then there's the T-72. But the crown jewel in Syria's tank collection? The T-90A. This beast comes equipped with a 125 mem 2 A-46 main gun. And here's a curveball for you. Among all these Russian machines, Syria's got an American star. The Humvee, a versatile light truck. So it's pretty clear, right? Syria's military is back to the hilt by Russia, all set to counter the US dominance. Speaking of which, let's touch on the US-Syria tension. It all heated up because of the chemical attacks on civilians, prompting the US to step in. But here's the twist. On the ground, US forces seem more focused on oil heists in northeast Syria rather than calming the storm. The damage? Syria's looking at losses north of $100 billion. In fact, Syria's foreign ministry claims the US's illegal occupation has cost them a whopping $107 billion in the oil and gas sector since the war kicked off in 2011. And get this, almost 90% of Syria's oil, yep, it's under US military control. All right, folks, next let's soar into the skies and talk about Syria's air force. With a force of 15,000 personnel, the Syrian Arab Air Force, or SAF for short, has been ruling the skies since 1948. Fun fact, it all started when the first batch of pilots graduated from a French-run flying school in Lebanon. Now when it comes to their flying arsenal, Syria boasts a total of 453 aircraft. Breaking it down, we've got 208 fighter jets, 18 attack aircraft, 5 transport planes, 67 trainers, 153 helicopters, and 27 attack choppers. And here's where it gets interesting. Since its inception, Syria's been vibing with Russian-made fighter jets, starting with the Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-21, a jet that's like the granddaddy of interceptors. Then they moved on to the MiG-23, the super-fast MiG-25, and the twin-engine MiG-29. But wait, there's more. 
Syria's latest additions are two types of Sukhoi jets from Russia, the Su-22 and the Su-24. Especially the Su-24, this bad boy is an all-weather, supersonic tactical fighter and was the first to rock a fully integrated digital navigation system. And for those chopper enthusiasts out there, Syria's got the Karnov Ka-27, K-226, the Mil Mi-24, which is loved by 58 countries. And to spice things up, the French-made Aerospatial Gazelle. So while the numbers might not be staggering, Syria's air force is a blend of history, power, and versatility. Given that Syria isn't dominated by seas and is mostly highlands, their navy isn't as expansive as you might think. With just 5,500 personnel, the primary role of the Syrian navy is to guard the nation's coastline and ensure the security of its territorial waters. In terms of hardware, Syria's got 33 patrol boats and 7 warships. No submarines, aircraft carriers, frigates, or helicopter carriers in sight. They're missile boats, straight out of Russia. The patrol boats they use are the Zhulk class from Russia and the Ghaim class from Iran. As for their warships, they're rocking the Polnokny class amphibious warfare ships from Poland. A blast from the past, Syria once had the Osa-1 and 2 missile boats. Developed in Russia in the 50s, these were classified as the largest torpedo boats. The Osa boats hold a record of sorts, with over 400 of them produced between 1,960 and 1,973. Now, let's talk geopolitics. There's buzz that Syria's strength could get a boost if it rejoins the Arab League. Integration of Israel into the region, which is extremely important. That's not going to happen unless there's a future for the Palestinians. One might wonder about the strength of Jordan's military. Let's begin by examining Jordan's military personnel. Surprisingly, despite Jordan's bold stance against Israel, their military personnel count is relatively minimal. They have a total of 170,000 personnel, which includes 90,000 active members, 65,000 reserves, and 15,000 paramilitary. When you look at these numbers in the context of Jordan's population, their military personnel make up only about 1.5% of their total population of 10.9 million people. In comparison with Israel, Jordan is significantly outmatched. Israel boasts a military force of 646,000 personnel, even though its population at 8.9 million is less than Jordan's. It's puzzling why more Jordanians don't opt for a career in the military, especially since the salaries there are considered higher. The lowest military salary in Jordan is approximately 1,051 US dollars, while the highest salary hovers around 2,501 US dollars. Discussing Jordan's military personnel, we can't forget their elite unit, the 71st Special Battalion. This battalion was established in 1973 in response to the increasing threat of terrorism in the Middle East at the time. This unit has been actively involved in combating ISIS in the Middle East, with notable operations in 2014 in the Arutba region of Afghanistan, and in 2016 in the Urbid area of Northern Jordan. In terms of equipment, the 71st Special Battalion is well armed. For assault rifles, they utilize the M4 carbine, which has an impressive firing rate of 970 rounds per minute. Their snipers are equipped with the Barrett M95, capable of hitting targets from a distance of up to 4.2 miles. They also use the M203 grenade launcher, which can shoot up to seven grenades. Next, let's discuss military budgeting. It's a given that without adequate funding, a military force would be compromised. From the information available, 
Jordan's military budget is quite limited, standing at only 1.9 billion US dollars. This budget represents about 4% of Jordan's GDP, which totals 45.74 billion US dollars. When compared to Israel, Jordan is clearly outmatched as Israel robustly allocates up to 24.3 billion US dollars to its defense. By calculations, Israel also dedicates 4% of its GDP, which stands at a massive 488.5 billion US dollars. It can be said that Israel has the luxury of dispersing such vast amounts due to its considerably greater wealth. Having discussed Jordan's personnel and finances, let's delve into the realm of their land-based weaponry. This area is crucial for Jordan if they were to face off against Israel, as geographically the two countries share an expansive land border. Hence, there's the possibility that Jordanian forces could confront Israel's formidable ground assets, such as the T-14 Armada tank. To counter Israel's land might, Jordan heavily emphasizes its army strength. In the main battle tank lineup, Jordan employs the French-made Leclerc tank. This tank, capable of speeds up to 43 miles per hour with a range of about 342 miles, boasts commendable weaponry. Its secondary weapon is a 12.7mm coaxial M2 HB machine gun that can fire at an astonishing 1,100 rounds per minute. Its primary armament is the Jayat CN 120-26-52 120mm tank gun. This primary weapon utilizes an autoloader system, which enhances the tank's efficiency, allowing it to fire roughly every 6, 10 seconds. What's more impressive is that this weapon incorporates the Athos Thermal Imager, which can detect and lock onto targets from a distance of 3.1 miles. Besides detection capabilities, the Leclerc tank's primary gun can also launch a variety of ammunition, ranging from high explosive rounds to razor-sharp penetration shells. Thus, it could be argued that the Leclerc tank is a worthy competitor to the T-14 Armada. Apart from the Leclerc tank, Jordan's army also possesses rocket launchers, notably the 412 HIMARS, this rocket launcher showcases incredible strength, able to target distances up to 310 miles depending on the ammunition used. Furthermore, Jordan's artillery choice is the M109 howitzer, complemented by the prestigious M982 Excalibur ammunition. This ammunition has been the talk of the town lately, especially following its success in Ukraine. With a 5.4 kilogram explosive charge of the PBXN9 type, this ammunition has frequently devastated Russian tanks. Even more impressive is its reach, able to target enemies up to 40 miles away, making it extremely effective in breaking down enemy assault formations. All the weaponry mentioned completes Jordan's ground arsenal, which consists of 1,588 tanks, 44,432 armored vehicles, 545 artillery launchers, and 88 rocket launchers. Moving from the Army, we turn to the Air Force. In modern warfare, this realm is arguably the most decisive as it offers unparalleled flexibility and a colossal strike capability. To bolster its Air Force, Jordan doesn't hold back. At the start of 2023, the country approved the purchase of 12 units of America's fourth generation jet fighter, the modernized F-16. Each unit of this jet is priced at 350 million US dollars. Surprisingly, this price is actually higher than the fifth generation American F-35 jet fighter, which is priced at 95 million US dollars per unit. If we crunch the numbers, Jordan's total expenditure for this aircraft purchase amounts to 4 billion US dollars. The reason Jordan opted for the F-16 over the F-35 is its greater flexibility and ease of use. In fact, there's a possibility 
that Jordan will increasingly employ female pilots in the future. Besides its flexibility and easier piloting, the upgrades on the modernized F-16 are no joke, encompassing 22 improvements. These range from radar enhancements and cockpit displays to the integration of five the-generation electronic warfare systems onto the fourth the EE generation jet. The electronic warfare system equipped on the F-16 is touted to provide superior early detection capabilities, and it even employs signal jammers to deflect incoming missiles. Hence, from a defense perspective, it's clearly superior. In terms of offense, the revamped F-16 can carry the AGM-154 joint standoff weapon, which has a striking range of up to 130 kilometers. If such ammunition were launched from above Jordan's capital, Amman, it could easily reach Jerusalem, Israel's capital. From land and air, we, of course, mustn't forget the Navy. In this realm, Jordan appears considerably weaker, possessing only 27 patrol boats, devoid of tactical ships or battleships. There's a compelling reason for Jordan's maritime limitation. Geographically, Jordan is essentially a landlocked country with only a tiny coastal strip to the south along the Red Sea. Therefore, Jordan sees no need to bolster its naval military capabilities. Palestine hasn't had an official army like Israel. This is because Palestine hasn't been recognized as a state yet. You might find yourself pondering, how has Palestine managed to stand firm and battle for its cause for over 50 years? The straightforward answer is that a lot of folks want to see Palestine become independent, but those who yearn for this are split into two main factions. The first is the Palestine Liberation Organization, PLO, and the second consists of groups outside the PLO. Let's break down both sides. Starting with the PLO, renowned for its legendary leader, Yasser Arafat. The PLO is like a mosaic of various Palestinian resistance organizations. Politically speaking, the PLO zeroes in on political lobbying for Palestinian independence. But don't let that fool you. PLO groups also have armed divisions. One of the largest factions within the PLO is Fatah, a political party birthed in 1959. When it comes to armed forces, Fatah has a special unit called Al-Aqsa Martyr Brigades, famed for their prowess in guerrilla warfare using long-barreled firearms. Then there's the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. whose armed force, the Brigade Abu Ali Mustafa, specializes in bombings and hijackings. And don't forget the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine, whose military wing, the National Resistance Brigade, shines in espionage and reconnaissance. When you talk about the PLO and its armed wings, their strength doesn't exactly shine in modern warfare involving rockets, missiles, and the like, as the organization mainly concentrates on the diplomatic arena. However, they've also orchestrated popular Palestinian resistance against Israel, known as Intifada. One of the PLO's triumphs was the Oslo Accords, a compromise in the Israel-Palestine conflict, where Israel was acknowledged by Palestine, and Palestine was given the green light to form its government. But the Oslo Accords didn't sit well with some groups, even sparking opposition. To this moment, the moment when we dare to pledge what for so long... These militant groups, not part of the PLO, rejected the compromise with Israel and pursued radical resistance. These non-PLO groups often throw a wrench in the negotiations between Israel and Palestine, as witnessed during the announcement of the Oslo Accords. So, when it comes to firepower, non-PLO groups pack a bigger punch than the PLO. One of the most notorious jihad forces out there is Hamas. Historically, Hamas isn't just a jihad force. But a significant Palestinian political faction ruling the Gaza Strip. Within this political faction, a military wing named the Brigade Is Ad-Din al-Qassam was formed, often seen standing up to Israel. The exact headcount in Hamas is a bit murky, 
but Israeli intelligence estimates it to be somewhere between 30,000 to 50,000 trained personnel. When it comes to weaponry, Hamas is no pushover. They've shown themselves to be well-armed, wielding various infantry weapons, including grenades, machine guns, improvised rockets, bombs, martyrdom, and homemade explosives. They also brandish advanced weapons, mainly modern missiles, including anti-tank Cornet EE, Conker's M, Bolsi 2, 9K11 Malyutka, and Milan rockets. For defense, they've got anti-aircraft rockets like SA-7B, SA-18 Igla, and SA-29 Iglas. In recent years, Hamas has also flaunted unmanned drones, claimed to be self-made, called Ababil-1. With all this firepower, it's no wonder Hamas is a feared war group in the Gaza Strip. Now, the million-dollar question is, if Hamas is just a political faction in a country with a chaotic economy, how can they be so flush with cash? So flush, in fact, that Hamas once unleashed up to 1,800 rockets in a single day at Israel to beat the Iron Dome. The wellspring of Hamas's funding remains shrouded in mystery, but the name Emir Qatar, Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani, often echoes. This is because the Emir once paid a visit to Hamas headquarters and forked over up to US dollar 1.8 billion. However, this donation seems like small potatoes compared to Hamas's actions, so the real benefactor remains under wraps. Besides Hamas, another pro-Palestine group worth a mention is PIJ, or Palestine Islamic Jihad also rooted in the Gaza Strip. This group sprang to life in 1981 as a backlash to the rejection of the Oslo policy, seen as phony diplomacy for Palestinian independence from Israel. Back then, Palestinian students studying in Egypt banded together to form PIJ. Like Hamas, PIJ aims to demolish the Israeli military, but specifically, PIJ also wants to erect an Islamic Palestinian state. Therefore, the current statehood proposed by Palestinian political figures is flat-out rejected by PIJ, who vowed never to partake in elections. Despite boasting a relatively modest force of about 8,000 folks, PIJ has made Israel and the United States jittery. Intriguingly, this stance from America and Israel is due to the slickly organized attacks executed by PIJ. It's worth noting that PIJ doesn't have missiles or rockets like Hamas, but precise war strategies often trump sheer firepower. Israel's frequent unease towards PIJ is also fueled by the suspicion that PIJ is in cahoots with Iran. This theory holds water, as Ziad al nakala the leader of PIJ, rubbed elbows with Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi. Therefore, this force is also rumored to receive training and weapons from Iran. So PIJ's attack capability isn't just hot air. Even worse, in August 2022, PIJ paraded with a replica rocket they claimed to possess, further rattling Israel. Officially, Palestine doesn't have a Palestinian military force to speak of. The NSF, which lays down the law there, is also a product of the Oslo Agreement tied to Israel. The clashes we've witnessed are the result of skirmishes by pro-Palestine groups like Hamas, PIJ, and others, each with their stakes in Palestine. From the Iron Dome, capable of destroying and thwarting missiles and rockets with a very high level of accuracy, to the Iron Beam, a new defense system that utilizes laser technology and offers extraordinary cost efficiency. Let's welcome these wonders of defense and military technology and how Israel has successfully applied these innovations to maintain its security and sovereignty. One tangible proof of Israel's defense strength is its air defense system known as the Iron Dome. For those who follow the conflict between Israel and the Palestine Liberation Army, the Iron Dome has become a familiar thing. The Iron Dome is proof of their strength in dealing with missile and rocket attacks with a very high level of accuracy, which threatens the territory of Israel. This system has a range of up to 155 kilometers and effectiveness in preventing attacks as far as 4 to 70 kilometers. 
The Iron Dome operates with three main components, an attack detection system, a control center, and a rocket launcher. The main advantage of the Iron Dome lies in its effectiveness in preventing missile and rocket attacks. However, the Iron Dome also has some limitations, especially in terms of budget. The cost of one missile launched by the Iron Dome reaches 80,000 US dollars, while the rockets launched by the Palestinian forces are only about 800 US dollars. Therefore, cost efficiency becomes a problem that needs to be overcome. To overcome this, Israel developed a new defense system called the Iron Beam. This system uses laser technology and has an interception distance of up to 7 kilometers. The use of the Iron Beam is estimated to only cost about 2,000 US dollars for each shot. The Iron Beam project is one of the largest and most ambitious military projects in Israel, with a budget reaching 150 million US dollars. If the Iron Beam project is successful, Israel will be a pioneer in global missile defense. In fact, this project can provide deadly protection against drone attacks launched in Israel, as has recently happened. In addition to the air defense system, Israel also shows impressive military technology advancements in the development of robotics-based tools in their army. One example is Robust, a main tool of the unmanned ground defense system controlled remotely. Robust is a modern warfare solution aimed at reducing the number of casualties. Equipped with advanced technology such as radar sensors and cameras, Robust provides accurate visual information to remote controllers about the surrounding conditions. Robust is equipped with an AI-equipped Turret Mate 30, allowing it to intelligently target and select the right ammunition. This turret is capable of destroying infantry lines and attacking enemy armored vehicles. In addition, Robust is also equipped with a drone flight system that can carry out reconnaissance and tapping missions as a primary source of information. The existence of Robust is a very significant asset for the Israeli military. The plan is for Robust to start being used by the Israeli military in the coming years, and it will be a significant addition to the strength of Israel's main ground defense system tools. Data shows that the Israeli military has more than 2,200 tanks, over 56,000 armored vehicles, 950 artillery launchers, and 300 rocket launchers. One of the mainstays of Israel's ground defense system is the Merkava tank, which will undergo an upgrade to a new variant known as the Merkava 5 tank. Merkava 5 has a range of up to 500 kilometers and a maximum speed of 63 kilometers per hour across various terrains. As a new generation tank, Merkava 5 uses artificial intelligence in various aspects of its tasks. Its main weapon is the Smoothbore 120mm cannon developed by Israel, which will be equipped with artificial intelligence to determine targets and ammunition and gain 360-degree situational awareness. The entire crew in Merkava 5 will use advanced helmets that allow information synchronization. In terms of defense, Merkava 5 is also equipped with an AI control system capable of launching mini-missiles to intercept approaching rockets and missiles. With its superior capabilities, this tank will be a dominator on the battlefield. We will discuss the Israeli Air Force after reviewing the Army. In terms of air power, Israel has a very formidable strength. They have 273 fighter jets, 202 support aircraft, and 174 helicopters. Interestingly, the Israeli Air Force is heavily dependent on American support. All four variants of fighter jets they use are from America, such as the F-15 Eagle, F-15E Strike Eagle, F-16 Fighting Falcon, and F-35 Lightning II. This shows a close relationship between Israeli military policy and America as a solid ally. Furthermore, the focus of the development of Israel's main air defense system tools has shifted to drone technology. They use at least four types of drones, including the IAI Heron, IAI Iten, Hermes 450, and the most advanced variant, Hermes 900. Hermes 900 is equipped with a free-fall bomb weaponry system and can carry up to one ton of payload. This drone technology gives Israel an advantage in reconnaissance, monitoring, and more precise attack capabilities. 
With these capabilities, the Israeli Air Force can carry out missions with lower risk and provide a strong air presence in supporting their military operations. The Navy is also an important aspect to discuss when talking about Israel in the Middle East. Israel, which has a sea border in the Mediterranean, a strategic area, has seven corvette ships, six submarines, and 45 patrol boats. Although the number is limited, Israeli submarines are famous for their excellent quality, especially the Dolphin-class submarines. The armament of these submarines includes six torpedo tubes with a diameter of 533 mm and four torpedo tubes with a diameter of 650 mm. There are also rumors circulating that each submarine carries a nuclear warhead with a strength of 200 kilotons. If this rumor is true, then it can be said that in this case, quality is prioritized over quantity. In addition, we also need to discuss the financial and personnel aspects of Israel. To maintain the sophistication of the systems and main tools that we have discussed previously, Israel must allocate a significant budget. Data shows that Israel spends about 24.3 billion US dollars on their military budget. In terms of personnel, Israel has a total of 646,000 personnel, consisting of 173,000 active personnel, 465,000 reserve personnel, and 8,000 paramilitary personnel. Among the hundreds of thousands of Israeli personnel, there is an elite commando unit known worldwide as Sayeret Matkal, which has special expertise in the field of intelligence. 